everybody. Uh, welcome, your favorite artist electronist, Mr. Kill 12 here. And uh, yeah, uh, today I didn't do anything. Actually, for a few days, for two, three days, uh, I'm, I'm only thinking and preparing, and I'm uh, contemplating some ideas. And these are the ideas from here to here. <laughs> so the first point here: serial and multiplexed uh, equals uh, a MCU, which it means a microcontroller, uh, a memory, and programming, pretty much. Dealing with memory, whatever the kind of memory you are using, and a microcontroller, uh, you know, with the internal memory, with the flash memory, or whatever. Uh, I will get into the memory very quickly because this is a very interesting subject. At least for me, it is uh, for a very long time, actually. What, what this means when you serial and multiplex, it means that um, when you have to deal with serial communication, uh, or more than that, uh, with multiplexed, uh, to deal with multiplex connections, uh, which involve a, a very few wires, uh, three or four wires in my case, uh, with a uh, with Arduino and the LCD and the LCD driver, uh, actually the LCD driver uh, is dealing with the multiplex the LCD, but to drive the, the LCD driver, you still it, it still it remains as a serial uh, endeavor. You have to, to have a you have to, to do some sort of programming. You have to uh, you must have uh, a microcontroller of some sort uh, that is also having a memory to hold the program uh, to transmit the uh, the programmed data. You know, uh, to that uh, controller and that controller to, to deal with uh, with the LCD multiplexing thing. One one uh, special thing that I didn't uh, put it here. I didn't yet learn the code from that library in Arduino that I found it. I didn't uh, stay on it to to figure it out yet. At, I didn't I didn't look at it at all. I just leave it. I, I just stay it and think about these problems that I'm having here. That's so I, I didn't do anything there. Uh, that's the problem. I don't know exactly how to drive directly with a PIC microcontroller, for example, or even with an Atmel. Uh, this Atmel AI yeah, Prom. That I'm having here. I, I don't know. I have to, to learn that uh, mechanism, how he how that guy is sending data uh, correctly to this driver, HT1621B uh, driver, uh, LCD driver. So I didn't learn the Arduino library yet. Uh, I should have put this line on the top there <laughs> because this is the most important. Everything I'm having here is based on, on this uh, <laughs> argument that I'm having here. That's uh, that's uh, that's the problem with serial and multiplex that it uh, it needs programming. And programming needs uh, uh, some sort of memory and some and and also processing unit, and you need absolutely you need a microcontroller with programming to 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 communicate with a serial device that is accepting only serial data on it. To compare it with a parallel, so serial and parallel serial is much more harder to uh, to drive than a parallel uh, communication, uh, and that's why I'm saying parallel is the best user interfacing uh, uh, in terms of how easy it is to communicate and how easy it is to transmit data uh, comparative with serial. So serial is very hard to used to it, to learn it, it's very hard to learn it, uh, and there are uh, multiple ways of communicating serially, uh, and depends on, on the on the factory that uh, created the, the, the chip, so it's it's very hard, it's quite hard to to drive a serial, and uh, quite easy to uh, to drive a, a parallel in comparison, you know, that's the, the difference from, from this two. I, I rather do all the stuff that I want with parallel than with a serial, because it's easy to use in parallel, uh, in serial is much more harder, and much more complex, and not not many people are comfortable working with serial. I, I am not comfortable at all uh, working with serial uh, interfacing in general. So uh, serial and multiplex is a problem. And when you hear serial, and this is very important, when you hear that you, when you see that you have to deal with a serial communication or multiplexed uh, devices, uh, automatically, it, so this is like a rule, you know, you have to put in uh, on the table a microcontroller. Uh, <coughs> it's, you cannot do shit without a microcontroller. You cannot communicate serially or to drive anything multiplexed in any other way, only with a microcontroller, and that's that's the rule. If you if you have a device that is having serial communication or multiplex uh, functionality, be, beside next to that devices that uh, are having these characteristics, you have to to to, to take uh, in account in, in calculation. You have to you have to know that you have to add microcontroller. So that this is the rule that I, I wanted to emphasize it, and I want it to to put uh, you know uh, as a as a first rule. First rule when you, when you see serial multiplex, it they need uh, immediately. You have to to think adding microcontroller. Okay, that's it about this part here. Uh, so this first line, I, I terminated the subject uh, about this first line. Now the second line here. So the project that I envision, and let me show you the project to, to know exactly what I'm talking about. I have it prepared here, <laughs> but I will not keep it on the table because it's kind of black and ugly. So this is the project that you've seen it before. Uh, this is the transformer, 5 volts transformer that is uh, linked there, is powering this device. And that's the Arduino that is also getting power from my computer through this cable and also the data cable for programming the thing. And uh, and this is this is the HT1621B. Uh, this guy here uh, is the drive LCD driver, and here is the actual LCD. So that's the LCD. That's the the, the target 
uh, for the project. So I, uh, I say this days, one second to remove this, because it's big and full of wires and, and fragile. And I also like white, a lot of white I like, uh, comparative with black things. You know, I don't like black things, I only like white things. <laughs> so uh, it's having a lot of uh, wiring, it's very fragile. Uh, um, it's, um, project that I'm having there, uh, and I, want, I don't want to, to, to fuck it up here when I'm explaining, when, when I'm waving my hands uh, on top of it, you know. Uh, it was quite hard to make it, and uh, I have to protect it a little bit from stupidity, from my stupidity. So now, uh, the project is very complicated for a small LCD digit. Uh, so that's the LCD digit I can show you, actually. So this is my little box with uh, LCDs. Uh, this is very, very easy to drive, very easy to drive. I already made a project with it. So this is uh, the LCD, and it is functioning quite nice. Uh, I can actually show you <laughs> very quickly. So positive here, negative there. And uh, this is the data cable, and uh, powering the device, five. And it's stopped because I get this potentiometer turned off. And uh, from external, it's switched from external device when I'm, yeah, when I'm switching it down. Uh, let me reset it. So it's functioning very well. It's even beeping. <coughs> it's sensing the zero there when it's beeping. The first zero here. So th this is the, the LCD is quite, I'm very, very proud of it. Actually, I will show you, I will show it uh, every time I can. <laughs> it was a very complex uh, project. And relatively fun, relatively fun. I, I did learn a lot of unwanted lessons. <laughs> I didn't want those lessons to, to learn them, but I, I had to learn them anyway. So back to the, the project here that I'm trying to explain. So these are extremely, quite quite easy to, to build, uh, quite easy uh, driver to make uh, from uh, XOR gates. I made it on that uh, project that you've just seen. Okay, and now it's time for this babies. <laughs> for this uh, multiplex, these are multiplex LCDs and they are quite, uh, I have 15 of them. And uh, they were quite cheap and they were quite unwanted. <laughs> they wanted to get rid of them probably, and th that's why they, they make it so cheap. Uh, but uh, for my for my needs, 15 of them are, are I only wanted one. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, because they are cheap, I also have some spares, and some 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 of them to test with, uh, especially now in the beginnings, uh, it's, it's very good to have multiple of them to test with them. So these are the, the, the guys, actually, I'll, I'll, I will keep them here, and I'll remove this, I'll keep them here, because it's about one, one of these, how to drive it. It's very, it's a very complicated uh, circuit, to make very complicated for one single uh, multiplex LCD and also very small. Uh, is is that small? You know, is from here to here, and that's it. And it's um, it it will be a quite a big, quite a big project only to to drive it. So I have a, a list of, or the map if you want, or the requirements, how to drive one multiplex LCD. Doesn't matter if it's this model or any other model. What is important if it if it is multiplexed? If it's multiplexed uh, <coughs> device or or LCD in this case. Uh, I have a map, I have a, a like a road, like a, a requirements, what you, you, you must have in order to, to build or to drive a multiplex LCD, right? So first of all, you, you must have the LCD three digit multiplex, in my case, okay? In my case, LCD three digit uh, multiplex, whatever, how many digits uh, or you have on the LCD or whatever the, the component it is. In my case, it's an LCD, but it can be anything else. Doesn't matter, as long as it is called it is named, it is a multiplex device, uh, the same rules apply to it, it's, it's the same thing. And uh, uh, I, I've seen uh, with uh, more than three digits and also uh, a, a little bit more pins than this uh, or or the same number of pins as this. I, I don't remember exactly. But uh, either way, it, it was the same configuration as this uh, LCDs uh, with three digits. Uh, so I, I've seen two digit uh, LCDs, which are very expensive, very, very expensive, comparative with these ones that I, I got with $1. I got five of them, but the two digit uh, LCDs are $1 per each module. One, one module with less digits on it, it is $1. So I, I paid for... a. Uh, all this 15, I paid $4, so $1 per five, uh, and here as well on the other side, five uh, LCDs, and another $1, so it's equal with uh, uh, $3, plus $3 and something, plus uh, uh, another $1 was the transport, and in total it was $4 for this lot that I'm having here. But uh, but other LCDs are, are quite expensive, unfortunately, and I've seen, so like I said, two-digit LCD, and also four-digit, and even, uh, how many? Yeah, six-digit. And that six digit is, is quite long and it's having the pins not disposed one on the other side, they are disposed uh, on the bottom. All right, uh, here are the two models uh, that I found. Uh, this is definitely multiplex, it doesn't say here in the title, it doesn't say anything in the title, uh, but it's looking very, very uh, similar with the multiplex LCD that I'm having. And I bet it's having these four pins, the commons, 12 data pins, and four com common, uh, these four common pins, and the rest of the pins are the segment pins. And uh, yeah, uh, this is one model, and this is how it's looking. Uh, it's having uh, pins on it. It's very good that it's having pins. And here is another view, and here is another view. I didn't buy these uh, models yet. Uh, I'm only showing them. And this is another uh, version, uh, which is having only one side of pins, as you can see. 17, it says in the title here, 70 pins. Yeah, it says here as well on the, the number 17, if you can see it. One, 
until 7 tenths. And um, that, yeah, it's, it's interesting guys. This is how it's looking from the other side. And this is also from the other side. Oh, this is the pin, which is <laughs> almost white on the white background. Very good, very smart. <laughs> you can barely see it, but that's the, the length of the pin. He was trying desperately to show you the length of the pin that is long, but the white background, it fucked him. It fucked his uh, his picture here. All right, oh, that's it about uh, this, these two models that I uh, find. Also the four digits. So oh, these two are six digits. Uh, why uh, do I like them having six digits? Because uh, I, I can put here, uh, especially for a clock, a classic clock, uh, it's, here is the hour. One and two uh, digits for the hour. Next digits, these two digits are the minutes, and these two digits are the seconds. And the same goes here as well: hours, uh, minutes, and then seconds. And uh, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. This is my uh, my model that I'm having here. Let's see. Here it is. Uh, the three-digit uh, LCD with ten uh, pins, and four of these pins are the commons, and six, the rest of the six pins are the data pins. I will put a picture for it. Uh, they, those are quite interesting. Those are quite interesting, and they are still multiplexed LCDs on. Uh, the same configuration as these ones. I did look on their uh, data sheet on all of them, uh, and they are quite similar with these three-digit uh, ones that I'm having. So it's it's perfectly. Uh, if I will buy one LCD like that, uh, either of those, uh, two-digit or or six digits one, uh, or even four digits, but uh, six digit you can make a clock with hours, minutes, and uh, seconds. Uh, that's why I, I'm uh, imposing on the six-digit one. Uh, so they can be drived as a multiplex device, uh, very similarly with, with these guys as well. With the same program even, probably. Most probably with the same program uh, in the when, when you have to program it. So, <clears throat> so first of all, the requirements, right? What, what you need. The requirements is the LCD. Then the driver chip. Uh, where are you? I don't have it here. I, I showed you before when I have it on the board there. Uh, actually, I can I can show it in my box here. My box of uh, treasures uh, of, uh, of chips is quite full. This is the, the chip. I wanted to show the box as well to see how I'm keeping everything. So this is the driver, HT1621B, multiplex LCD driver IC. And uh, that's, uh, in my case, what I need. I need these two components, the, the first ones, where the driver IC. Yeah, sure. A way to communicate with the HT1621B, this driver IC. A way to communicate with it, it means these four options. Mm. This, these four options that I'm having here, one, two, three, or four. So one of them, uh, not, not all of them at once, but uh, <laughs> uh, it, I will use all of them probably in the end. I, I'm thinking about it. So with Arduino, you just seen that uh, big board, blackboard that I, I showed you here. Uh, if you've seen my uh, previous uh, video, you've seen that it worked fine, absolutely fine with Arduino. And uh, that uh, lucky, lucky, very lucky library that I find it. If I didn't, if I couldn't find that library, I, I'm not sure if I could uh, make these videos until here, which is having an internal flash this is a microcontroller that is having an internal flash inside it. Uh, so this is the first option that I already made it, and it's working absolutely fine. And I have a, another version for this. For this, instead of Arduino, I have a small uh, uh, boards like a Pico Arduino. Uh, like, like, let me, yeah, Arduino Tiny is called. These are the boards. But unfortunately, you see here one-time use, so I will have to use them, program them, and forget about them. These are not uh, made for testing, like like the Arduino, like programming and erasing and programming again. Uh, it's a, uh, it is possible to to use them like that, but. Um, they are quite difficult, quite difficult. Uh, I don't like it. I personally don't like it, how to, how they are drive, drived. So this is the board. Uh, it's called Arduino Tiny. Uh, they don't have any, this is how they came in a, in a bag. And I find I find this box for them, I believe. Or well, this is the original box they came in, I, I don't remember. And this is the board. So uh, this is another option to use an Arduino or Arduino-like from Arduino family. And uh, this is an interesting option, but it's quite expensive for this little fucker, the, the smaller in size smaller in size method uh, possible. And uh, I didn't get into programming one chip like that. I should, I should consider to learn how to program one chip like that because it's uh, to make a, a similar board like this, insert that chip, program it, and then link only the pins to whatever I need and get rid of this, all this board that uh, is uh, is eating space and I can compact it. I can make it more compact than it is here. So that's uh, an idea. But the chip itself, it's quite expensive as well. So uh, uh, buying it on the board, on this board, uh, it's a very, very small difference in price, very small, infinitesimal uh, difference. Uh, it's not really worth it. I mean, it's, it's worth it to, to buy it with the board itself. It's very easy to access everything. That's uh, the conclusion that I got. But for, for the how small everything you can make from that point of view, I'm, I'm saying to, to get some chips, not exactly this version of chips chips that I'm having there because these are is extremely tiny pins is having there. And I, I don't I really don't have any, any possible tools to, to deal with those very small pins there, uh, but a larger chip. Uh, the older ones probably uh, that were deep, uh, you know, like, like this guy here. And uh, okay, that, that's enough about this. I only wanted to show you that uh, there is another version or another method, uh, another phase uh, of how you can do things, and it's quite very very easy to program to program uh, an Arduino uh, through that uh, uh, library that I find it luckily, very luckily. And so this is the first line here. The second line is using an Atmel AEPROM AT28C 
64 in this case. I have another one. Uh, instead of 64, it's uh, 16. That uh, specific one, I, I got it as a gift from an English friend from UK. And uh, that was the first air prom that I put my hands on and I got uh, some interaction with and I learned a lot with it. Uh, and I use it on a, in a project with a, with a matrix LEDs and I already know how to, to drive that specific one. But this guy that I'm having here is a 64 and I expect to, to have the exact same pin out and also the pin functionality like the other one. The other one is a little bit smaller, like two pins smaller than this one that I'm having here uh, because it's smaller memory inside. But this one is larger, very larger memory. I have, I don't remember how many, probably 10 of them. I buy it, brand new, not, not used at all. I don't know about the, uh, about the other one, but I want to to get uh, the pin out, the functionality, how to drive it. I want to learn how to drive this uh, 8028C64 AI Prom. And uh, I, I search in my, my pile of stuff that I, I buy along the years. And this uh, module that I'm having here, uh, this chip is fitting exactly. And if you were wondering why they are having such large uh, size here, why is so large? You see, when, when you set a chip like this, is is quite uh, it's quite large for for something like this. It's not made only for this kind of chips. So here here is the answer. This is why <laughs> this guy is fitting absolutely perfectly with a tiny uh, little bit of tolerance. You see, it is you can move it a little bit here, and when you secure it like that, that's it. It's not uh, fitting or moving anymore. So it's uh, this is brand new, absolutely brand new, and I took it a very 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 long time ago when I didn't even know. I didn't know. I was very young. When I, when I bought this. I thought it's very interesting. I was thinking actually when I bought it uh, to program, uh, to make myself a programmer for PIC programmer, uh, a PIC programmer for, for microchip, for, for PIC uh, 16F, uh, 16, uh, 16F84 uh, uh, PIC microcontrollers when I was learning them. I was very, very young and uh, I, I probably I thought well, and I have this device uh, from back then. It's, it's looking like it's, uh, I bought it yesterday, <laughs> but in fact, in reality, it's older as, I don't remember, probably, 20 years, maybe something like that. 15, maybe 15, 15, 20 years like that is, but it's looking like it's brand new because I keep it uh, uh, in a bag. I keep it uh, uh, without uh, the sun beating on it. Uh, so it, it stayed in shadow all the time in darkness uh, without uh, uh, ultra, uh, ultraviolet, you know, from the sun to, to affect the, the plastic uh, texture and uh, color. And it's looking quite new. I'm very proud of it. So uh, that's a, this is, this was very lucky. What I'm showing you here is very lucky that this fit exactly like that. I will have to check it to be sh absolutely sure. But uh, if I remember right uh, from from my general knowledge that I'm, I'm having, I believe I, I've seen smaller and even longer than this. And I believe this is uh, medium. So uh, in a sense, I, I got extremely lucky having this uh, size of, of this uh, module that I'm having. But I, I will have to check it. <laughs> so this is the Atmel AIPROM. And the difference, it is a difference be between AIPROM and flash uh, memory. Th these are two types of memory. Actually, the flash memory is uh, by itself is split into modes. But it's still flash. Uh, so the difference from the flash and AIPROM, and I had to look to check, uh, to, to refresh my memory and to recheck the, the knowledge that I'm having. So the difference from an AIPROM and a flash is that an AIPROM is a, <coughs> is a, is a very old technology. It's uh, the technology right before the flash. So it, it appeared the AIPROM and then appeared after AIPROM, after a couple of years, appeared flash and it remained until today. Uh, but AIPROM was the king at some point. And what it made it, uh, what's, what's inside it, uh, the, the actual memory that it's having is based on, uh, on transistors only. So it's directly accessing those transistors uh, pretty much. And the flash um, mechanics that, that, that is functioning inside it uh, is, um, is made from logic gates, from NAND gates and NOR gates. So uh, there is two types, NAND flash, and nor flash. And the difference between these two types of flashes is that uh, one is faster, one is uh, not that fast. And probably the, uh, if I remember right, the the writing, how many how many times you can write on the flash before uh, you cannot write on it anymore. It, it just, uh, it remains uh, permanent. It becomes a permanent uh, chip like that. And uh, uh, from what I re read, a flash memory, uh, you can write on it 1000 times. But this uh, AIPROM, uh, you can write on it 1 million times. And uh, that's why it's, uh, it's a different technology, pretty much. This is older and, and uh, very slow uh, comparative with the flash. And flash is very, very fast, but very low uh, uh, writing times. You know, you can, you can write only a certain number of times. First of all, I want to learn uh, how to use my new uh, Atmel <laughs> AI prompts. And this will serve as a memory for the characters and also running a program in the same time. I think and I hope I can run a program directly from the AI prompt, like a cycle, you know, um, or from an, an input uh, or from two inputs uh, up and down. Depends, you know. Uh, so one input for, for counting up and another input for counting down. I have no idea how to do it yet, uh, but that's the idea. That's the that's what I'm planning here. And I was preparing <laughs> here and showing it uh, what it means. Then uh, the next uh, requirement is the peak 
microcontroller uh, that I have and that I know uh, quite well, quite well to program it. PIC 12F508 uh, that is also having an internal flash. It is saying in its in name when you open the datasheet is saying it's a flash microcontroller. Uh, it's based on, on flash memory and. Uh, I just checked uh, exactly this uh, detail because there are peak microcontrollers with flash and air from inside them. Oh, I'm not sure if they are only air from peak microcontrollers, but uh, I, from what I read, they're, they're having both of them, some of them, <laughs> not all of them, some of them, they have both of them. But the, the large majority of the peak microcontrollers, they only have a flash uh, memory and that's it, you know, like 80% or 90%. I'm not exactly sure, I'm not a doctor in these uh, matters, and I'm, I'm telling you the, the knowledge that I'm having, the, the general knowledge, from my general knowledge. I mean, it's, it's not 100% accurate, <laughs> but from what I know is what I'm saying, you know, from what I know. The large majority are using inter this internal flash memory. Probably there are, uh, uh, I just read about the memory and uh, uh, how many types of memory there are. And there are quite a few, and I only knew about these two types, and that's it. And probably three, which involves, uh, which it is a mechanical uh, type of memory. Uh, well, actually, four. <laughs> uh, a magnetic, uh, with uh, magnetic cores memory, which is very, very hard to drive. It's extremely hard to drive such a memory like that. Uh, you have like uh, an input to, to, to charge those magnets, then to read the charging on the magnets. So that's another uh, input output. You have to deal with, and then uh, another wire is very very complex to, to drive such a thing. But that's uh, that uh, core memory, magnetic core memory is very hard to drive. I'm, I'm not sure if it, even if in my life I would build such a thing, but it crossed my mind. <laughs> uh, then uh, mechanical memory, and I will talk about it very. Is the next line here? Is the last line? <laughs> so the mechanical memory and these two uh, flash memory and AI pro memory. That's that's the. These are the all the memory uh, ways, permanent memory, non volatile memory that I know of and that I was aware of. So. Let's, uh, and, and I discovered there are even more than that. There are resistive memories now. I, I didn't know about it. Uh, it's having a funky name, Intel, uh, and another brand. They, they started some research and they, they give up on it, uh, apparently. They didn't like it. I don't care. <laughs> but it's interesting that there is such a thing as resistive memory. You know, it's not only transistor based, like logic gates, and only transistors like the AirProm. There are also resistor memory. Very interesting. Uh, but what we can do, what I'm talking here is what I can do and what I can build with the stuff that I have and the stuff that is relatively accessible and relatively easy to, to make with. You know? uh, the next one is a, is a mechanical memory, but also permanent. So all of these are permanent memories, what I'm having here. Uh, a memory wheel plus logic gates, most probably. But this is a very new idea. I never tested it. I never ever tested it. I only thought of it uh, from the perspective of a memory wheel, uh, from a mechanical permanent memory. That's that's the idea. So this I, I'm, I'm having a drawing here. It's like a band. You know, it's like a band, and you, you unwind it, and here somewhere are some sensors that are, that is reading band. When, when you drag the band, the sensor are reading the, the bits on the band. And here and here are two motors. You see a little MM, uh, two motors, and this motor is for this roll, and this for this disc, and this motor here is for this another disc that is dragging uh, the when it's reading, and this motor uh, is when it, it finished dragged all the band, all, all the stuff on this disc. This will rewind. <laughs> this is for only for rewinding to to get it back from the start. Pretty much, and uh, this is—it's easy on the paper and as a concept, but in reality, pff, I never built such a thing. But this is my idea: how to make it. And this are how the bits are actually looking on the. Let me actually get close to, or, or make a zoom on it. Yeah, this is better. So, <coughs> so this is the motor, motor. You see, and this is a wheel, a wheel. And here is a little sensor that is reading, and this is the the. What is this is an example? What is having on this uh, sheet of paper? Pretty much. Uh, and I, I know you, you can't really see exactly what is going on. This is the margin, and this is the margin here. This is two margins. And this is a line, and this is a line. And this line is, is going up like that, okay? And I'm having one, two, and three uh, bands, okay? And on each band, I'm having squares. Uh, this is square one, squ square two. So two bits, pretty much. One or zero. One is black is one. One is nothing, or white is zero. And here the third band is just numbers. As you can see, uh, I got there uh, uh, six, seven, eight, nine. You see? Well, it's starting from one. Uh, this is only to, to know at what line uh, I'm writing the code uh, just for my to help me when, when, I'm, when I'm writing and also reading the code that is written on this band and this is a permanent uh, memory that uh, I, I believe everyone can do it <laughs> everyone can do it uh, but uh, I bet I, I'm not sure if I will even make such a thing probably I will try some days I, I'm not sure so this uh, AIPROM solution is, is quite uh, small and the other uh, guy that uh, was almost the same uh, and more powerful, almost the same size as this guy, uh, and more powerful. Uh, so I'm presenting alternatives here, and I want to, to play with these alternatives because uh, one thing is easier than the other. You know, it's it's a way, it's a mentality. You have to, to deal with a mentality, and it's good to, to have multiple choices to choose from. Uh, the experience of building with such diverse uh, possibilities uh, is, uh, I think, it's very good to have such an experience, and actually to show it on a video and explain it and uh, and be proud that you, you made such a thing. Okay, so I, I finalized. 
talking about this subject here, this complicated subject. Now uh, it remains only this guy. Oh, I, I already I already talked about that. So not that many permanent memories that I know uh, from my general knowledge. Now I'll probably repeat myself, but I already have the points here. So not that many models to pick from. Uh, like I said, uh, the flash memory, the air pro memory, uh, and the mechanical memory, pretty much. You know, mechanical permanent. All of these are permanent. You see that that I I, I made it uh, like that permanent. Uh, that. What, what it means, or non-volatile, uh, what it means permanent memory, it means that uh, when you took out, take out the power from the chip, so you, you, you don't have power on the chip, it retains whatever you programmed in it. That's what it means, the permanent. And volatile per, uh, memory is only is having memory only when it's powered. When you unpower it, when you take out the power, it loses, it is erasing, is uh, forgetting everything inside, and it's quite uh, a shitty, <laughs> quite a shitty memory uh, from, from this point of view when you have to restart the, the device. You know, uh, very hard to work, or integrate it into uh, your project. So usually when you have to deal with uh, permanent memories, uh, it's quite hard to, to work with them and also to integrate them in, into your project. Uh, not cheap. Uh, usually memories uh, are, are uh, so so much stuff condensed in them. And uh, because of that work they, they, uh, they, they put in it, uh, they, they are they are quite expensive. They, they are not cheap. When you have to, to buy a couple of them, like tens or hundreds probably uh, of uh, chips. Uh, but if you are buying one or two, well, yeah, probably they are cheap as a couple of pieces, but if you have to buy uh, more than a few, uh, it's uh, it's not cheap anymore. Uh, and then the parallel versus serial, and this is debatable. Uh, driving, what I'm referring, how to drive it. Uh, what I'm having here, this Atmel uh, 2864, this guy, what I'm having here, this is a parallel. It's very easy to drive. Uh, I love parallel uh, driving and programming with parallel devices. I, I love it. Serial, I hate them. <laughs> I hate serial programming. And uh, <laughs> but I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best, and I know they are fast and they are the future. Already they are used everywhere. Uh, the serial, uh, but they are very very hard to deal with, and I'm not comfortable with with serial in general. And uh, and I have another memory, also a pro memory. Or I believe also from Atmel that I didn't put it here on the list. And uh, that is serial, only serial. So I'm having this parallel one, which is quite easy to work with and very easy to learn it. Uh, so this is parallel. And I have another memory that is serial and it is having less pins and it's uh, very, very small. I believe it's like an eight, uh, eight pin uh, chip or like a 555 <laughs> chip, I think. I don't remember exactly. I have to look uh, on it. Probably it's even larger. But I have the, both uh, version of A from serial and this parallel that I'm having here. But I choose to use this parallel because it's, uh, it's brand new. I never use it, this uh, specific model that I'm having here. Oh, and it's very easy to drive. And, uh, it will be a little bit more, you know, uh, easy to, to to integrate it into my project. That's the idea. And the problem, another problem, is how to make the program itself. If if in the in the this air from itself, if uh, probably I will have two options, but I'm not very sure uh, on one option because uh, I'm quite quite new to air proms and I'm not uh, a doctor in it. I, I know some basics uh, how to to use an air from, but I'm not uh, very very very. I didn't use them extensively. That's what I mean. I use them uh, sporadically uh, here and there. And very few times, one or two times, I, I use them. So I know a general idea about them, but uh, I'm not a <laughs> I'm not a doctor in, in air prompts at all. So uh, two ways to 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 run the program from an air prompt: either to put the program inside the air prompt itself and run it from 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 inside it with a clock with with something, or from external sources, some external driver or, or programmer, something that is holding the program, uh, like a PIC microcontroller, my uh, PIC 12 f 508 probably to make a program that will dictate how what to to show what address to access uh, probably. Probably, or even lower than peak microcontroller uh, with logic gates, probably. <laughs> but with logic gates, it will became a very, very, very big, very big uh, and complex uh, circuitry. But it will be uh, much more easy to program than with uh, assembler for the peak twelve uh, five five eight, which is a bit more hard to, to deal with. And I, I believe I covered absolutely everything. Uh, it passed right now exactly fifty nine minutes, <laughs> exactly one hour. And I believe I, I covered everything. I'm I'm very sorry I didn't show something. That is functioning here. That is running. Uh, because, uh, I'm sorry that I'm presenting only the ideas. What I, what I thought about it, and right now at this point, I don't think I will make anything with this multiplex. Okay, with this multiplex LCD. I, so I'm not completely sure if I can build uh, anything with this uh, multiplex LCD here, uh, because it's very, very, very exaggerated, complicated to drive it. And even if I have a bunch of uh, chips, and I have the the path or or the, uh, the the direction, I know how, what to do, and I enumerate it here, how to do it, in many ways, actually. I think it's a quite hard project for only driving this little motherfucker. And it will be very big, and only to drive it. And I have absolutely, I have, I swear to God, I have absolutely no idea what kind of project to, to make. Uh, to make another counter? <laughs> I have already one. <laughs> I have this guy, and I have this guy. Uh, they are they are working absolutely fine. Uh, with this, I, I got crazy, and I got a very, you know, uh, very crazy with, with the functionality of it. But uh, what it all resumes at, it's the driver that I made from uh, XOR gates, the LCD itself, uh, the clock for the LCD, 
uh, the, also the clock when it's spinning uh, uh, by itself or, or from external sources and that's it and this is only from external sources is reading the beating from from whatever that i connected here and uh, that's it uh, so to make another counter with this little shit and uh, originally originally when i when i bought when i didn't know the stuff that i know that i explained so far when i only buy it uh, these modules and I was waiting for them I was imagining I was planning in my head oh I'll make such a small device because the, the LCD is very small and the, the device that I will make it will be uh, smaller as well but now ta -da 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 -da. <laughs> big Bolshoi motherfuckers <laughs> very very big it'll be a big board only to drive that shit and what what kind of project uh, again to, to make a, another counter uh, I have no idea I really really have no idea what to do next uh, probably I will do another counter because it's the only practical uh, <laughs> Uh, project that I can think of and that I can use it, uh, you know, and yeah, I will think about more. I, I did also think these days, like I said, I, I didn't do anything for a couple of days. I only stayed and uh, and think about things, how to to make it and if I I should make it. And um, shit, it it is very 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 complicated thing. This uh, it's a bit more complicated than I uh, expected and that I imagined. That's what I'm what that's what I want to say. But I, I don't want to discourage uh, myself or anybody else that is trying to build such a thing because uh, this is a very interesting lesson in electronics and is used everywhere. These multiplexed LCDs are used everywhere with their corresponding uh, peak microcontroller, uh, whatever they are using there. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm enumerating here are my options, but you can find your options that you can that you know of. Uh, I know only on, on, on these options. I hope in the future I can expand uh, in, uh, in other programming microcontrollers brands uh, different from uh, microchip peak microcontrollers that I'm uh, relatively used to, but still hard uh, to, to use them. Uh, it's still hard to use them, even if I'm used to them uh, already. And uh, I'm, I'm not, that's why I'm trying to find alternatives. Even if it's too big size, the good side is they are very easy to, not very, but they are quite easy to, to program them. Uh, but the peak microcontroller is very small, or, or a microcontroller in general is very, very small as a footprint, you know, uh, as a size, uh, but it's very hard to, to, to program it, uh, especially in Assembler. If you are absolutely uh, and only make it in Ensemble. I find a solution, an alternative to Ensemble using a C compiler. Uh, and I showed it a couple of times, I believe, already. It's called CCS compiler. And uh, that, is, uh, that is converting everything in binary. Uh, when, and you only load that binary file uh, into the peak microcontroller and it's working. Uh, but it's also it's having some redundant uh, code uh, spitting along. So it's, it's quite large for chips that have a big, large memory. Uh, but my... 12F508, they don't have that big large memory inside them. And uh, the redundant code that this CCS uh, compiler is, is adding to the actual code that is uh, needed to run only um, is, is filling up very quickly the, the memory of the chip, pretty much. And um, uh, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with it, actually. What I needed to do, to do with it, I did it already, and it's very, very easy to, it's, it's much more easy to use it than the actual assembler uh, for the, the peak. But the actual assembler, you can uh, avoid the redundant code. Uh, you can uh, write more, a little bit more inside the memory of the chip. So pretty much making it non-redundant and uh, very specific. Uh, and uh, and you can optimize the code uh, uh, very well and uh, much better than the C compiler is doing it automatically. Uh, this is the theory that I know, but uh, who knows in reality what is doing, uh, who and what is doing there. <laughs> I did check them. And, uh, this is the impression that I have, but I'm not completely sure 100% uh, if this is the case in, in reality. Someone uh, else should actually check if this is true or false, what I'm saying here. If, uh, if in indeed that CCS compiler is adding more redundant uh, stuff uh, extra code, and if uh, assembler code is uh, is pure and magic. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, this is it for this part. Sorry for the long video and for the long talking. I know you had to concentrate a little bit on everything that I discussed, but uh, I believe you learned something interesting about uh, many things, many aspects, and many chips, and uh, many technologies, pretty much. And uh, you know, I, I think it's a very interesting subject. And I want to do something with this multiplex LCD that I'm having there. I'm not sure what I will do at the moment. I'm, I'm, I'm quite uh, perplexed. I'm quite, uh, I'm still thinking on a, on a good subject or, or a good project, how, what to do with it. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching my movies. Leave a like and uh, see you later from our favorite artist electronist, Mr. Q12. Bye-bye. <laughs>